Okay. How do you take the divinely simplex and make it so simple that somebody could understand it? Talking about gravitation and co-gravitation. We just talked about before in another video, there's absolutely no such thing as gravity. Gravity does not exist, nor does any body in the universe have a center of mass. Deductively, retroductively so, that has to be the case. What do you mean there's no such thing as a center of mass of any object? Acceleration of mass 1 towards mass 2, or... more complex systems, multiple masses towards the center of gravity, or a center of mass extrapolated over multiple masses. Well, there's no such thing as a center of mass. What there is is a center of counterspace. Counterspace is the center. Obviously, everything is extrapolated regarding matter or mass from the tiniest atom to large bodies is an extrapolation of magnetism. The entire visible universe, the cosmos, the stethos, is countered. Opposite polarity, by definition, obviously is all divergence, all magnetism, inverse to counterspace. Polarity equals space equals force and motion equals location. Remember that there's no such thing as weight without talking about the location and the medium. Weight is location specific and medium specific. Hold on to this little boring bit here. I'll start to get into some interesting stuff that you'll not find anywhere else. So just bear with me for a couple minutes here, okay? We have to work retroductively like the ancient Egyptians did and the ancient Greek Platonists using retroduction. Force obviously is extrapolated. Denotation and connotation reference to motion. Motion obviously its counterpart force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Denotation being inertia, connotation being acceleration. So therefore what are we talking about versus motion and acceleration? Are they two relative to each other? If we don't know what something is moving to or from, or accelerating to or from, how do we differentiate motion versus acceleration? Well, the difference is one is the negation of space, the elimination of space, uh, the, multi uh, the, uh, the multiplication, the multiplicative of the erasure of space. The other is the additive of the creation of space, not into space, but the creation of space. So we talk about the co-gravitational field. And bear with me for a couple more seconds and I'll get into some of the interesting parts. At least it should be interesting to you. We're talking about the uh, gyromagnetic precession and in gravity in reference to force and motion, how you're actually able to change the co-gravitational field, obviously in many ways. Um, like I said, uh, counter space can be countered. What we refer to as gravity, i.e. counter space, can be polarized by changing the co-gravitational field of mass 2 and acceleration towards mass 1 by changing force and motion vectors. What you're doing is you're causing a coherency just like magnetism and magnetic reciprocation centrifugally, centripetally, you actually have clockwise, counterclockwise motion canceling each other out. One is either additive what you call magnetic repulsion which does not exist it's literally force and motion or you have cancellation. You have the negation of space and force and motion, what you incorrectly call acceleration or magnetic attraction, which is also a big misnomer. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. There's no such thing as magnetic repulsion. Magnetic attraction is nothing other than the erasure of space, the erasure of force and motion extrapolated as a move towards counter space, just like bringing two magnets together. As I talked about before, bringing two like-on-like -like polarities together. You can actually see it in the ferrule cell. You can see a ferrule viewing film. Let's say we have two north poles here. Remember, there's no such thing as a north pole or south pole in a magnet. We're talking about extrapolation of polarity as meant counter space. The inverse to counter space. Inverse to counter space, point, line, circles here. Extrapolation, we have polarity. And the only thing we're talking about in polarity, we're talking about inverse spin. Now, inverse spin is obviously relative. We have the exact same spin going on the North Pole as we have the South Pole. Either have cancellation or addition. Now, getting further into gyroscopic motion. This is something you actually never read about. I mean, of all the hundreds of YouTube videos or videos out there and books on gyroscopes, 
you'll actually have no explanation of why applied force of motion perpendicular to force of motion of spin on a gyroscope will cause what you'd incorrectly call repulsion. What it is is a repulsion to counter space because everything just like magnetism is either centrifugal, centripetal, either canceling or additive. Cancellation, i.e. avoidance, incorrectly called magnetic attraction. Cancellation of space. Or additive. You can't force in motion, either, either creation or increase of force in motion by a non-canceling centrifugal magnetic divergence, incorrectly called the magnetic repulsion, or you have the avoidance the same. You stop making these videos at 4 o'clock in the morning. So here we have a nice precision gyroscope. I'm going to spin it up so that it is moving. The flywheel is moving in a clockwise fashion. Okay, here we have our precision gyroscope. The flywheel is moving in a clockwise direction. Now if I try to move the entire gyroscope, including the flywheel, you notice it will not let me. If I move it in the same applied force and motion vector as the flywheel is moving, I have voidance. I have force cancellation to the center of counter space. Remember, there's no such thing as a center of mass. It doesn't exist. Neither does gravity. Now, if I apply force and motion perpendicular to inverse to, see, we have to work back de retroductively using Greek Platonic methodology. So. Here I have applied force in motion perpendicular for ease of explanation. This is called the inverse of the already existent applied force in motion existent in the flywheel, which is moving clockwise. I'm rotating the entire unit counterclockwise. It's kind of slick. I can actually make it fly out further. So here I have force in motion applied to the same direction of travel. So I have cancellation, what you would incorrectly call magnetic attraction. Well, we don't have a magnet here. We have a brass and aluminum gyroscope. So, what are we talking about? Here's our gyroscope. Here's our flywheel. We have force and motion. And I can actually obviously spin the flywheel either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how I wind the string. Here we have applied force and motion. If I move in the same direction as whatever direction so right now let's just say let's just say this I've spun it up counterclockwise my real demonstration a second ago I spun it up clockwise so let's say I have the flywheel moving counterclockwise if I apply counterclockwise force remember this happened I have cancellation same thing applies to magnetism you have you have force cancellation doesn't want to move, it absolutely resists movement. The larger the mass of that flywheel is too, the much, much harder it is to do that. Unfortunately, really expensive gyros, really large gyroscopes are incredibly expensive. There's no need to have one. The same thing is applied whether it's a large gyroscope or this little precision one. But, if I apply force in motion perpendicular to, now without getting into specifics, so I'm applying a clockwise motion, even though it's perpendicular, we have perpendicular applied force. Here we have counter space. Entire mass of the flywheel, if it was large enough, I would obviously collapse. And on itself, this is counter space. So, I have applied force in motion, what you'd incorrectly call it. If it was applied to magnetism, you'd call this magnetic repulsion, which it's not. It is force in motion. This perpendicular force in motion applied to the already moving counterclockwise force in motion and our flywheel caused the gyroscope to rise. There is no such thing as gravity. None. With a coil, two magnets, and one other object that I won't get into right now, I'll explain it in a future video, you're actually able to see these portals on the ferrule cell, the increase force and motion between these two masses, you're actually able to change the co-gravitational field. Now Oliver Heaviside talked about this, and uh, this is where Dr. Oleg uh, Jefferminko actually extrapolated on causality, electromagnetic induction, and gravitation based upon a, a sub-note in 
Appendix A, Volume 1 of all our heavy sites, all of our heavy sites work where he talks about what gravity is and the entire book and his other book, Gravitation and Co-Gravitation, are based upon a detailed mathematical extrapolation talking about the co-gravitational field, but in really simplex terms, the, the co-gravitational field is nothing other than, as I showed you in our flywheel here, because we're talking about a mass here. Remember that there's absolutely no difference between magnetism and gravity. Gravity does not exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Let's say aliens were to land tomorrow. No, I'm not a, these idiots talking about aliens and all this other nonsense, but one of the first things I would ask our, our stupid human race would be, where did we come up with this bullshit idea of an independent field modality known as gravity? And they would laugh and balk at this nonsense. A magnet is nothing other than a spatial object with both polarization and coherency. A large, massive body, say our Earth and the Moon, we have incoherent, infinite collection of atoms, and you have a point of counter space at which there is acceleration around each other. Obviously, if we were to eliminate the motion of the two, they would obviously come together. There's no such thing as gravity. A magnet is nothing other than a spatial object which is both polarized and coherent. Magnetism is just the innate polarity of any object or even atom towards polarization. The entire interatomic volume of any atom is based upon magnetic divergence. That's what gives the atomic volume, the uh, actually it's the atomic radius and picometers to any atom. Doesn't matter whether it's an atom or a large mass, like this bismuth sphere that I actually cast. Why does this bismuth sphere fall to Earth, or accelerate towards Earth? It has nothing to do with gravity. Gravity does not exist. It is the elimination of force and motion, the elimination, the erasure of space. There are only two principles in the universe. If you're more intelligent, as a human race, stop worrying about getting laid or getting rich all the time, we'd actually understand this. Inertia and acceleration are force and motion. Gravity does not exist. A magnet is only an extrapolation, a connotation of an object which is a collection of polarized atoms, as any atom is, but also with coherency of those polarized atoms. So a magnet is just a polarized and coherent object. Gravity does not exist. How can we extrapolate and deduce from gravity what we were referring to? Gravity is a move towards counterspace, the erasure of force and motion. Motion, extrapolation, and denotation of force and inertia and acceleration. Acceleration, extrapolation, and, de and uh, connotation of inertia. So. Motion and acceleration are two connotations, extrapolations, the attributes of force and inertia. This is why the gyroscope moves that way. This is why if you apply a perpendicular force to the motion of the gyroscopic flywheel, the gyroscope will either raise or it will self-center around the point of counter space. Just like our magnet, we have centrifugal and centripetal cancellation. It's either additive or canceling. If it's additive, you have force and motion. Just like bringing two like-on-like -like polarities together, you will increase force and motion. If you bring them close enough together, and you can see this underneath the ferro cell, you can see this in other magnetic viewing methodologies and mechanisms, you can actually see an ether projection a non-existent projection, just like a magnet at 360 degrees, perpendicular to the applied force and motion of these two magnets being brought together. This is the same thing in applying force and motion perpendicular to the direction of travel of our gyroscopic flywheel. If you don't think about that, if you don't think that's important, then you're an idiot. And you need to re leave me a nasty comment and you need to go piss off somewhere. If you think you're smarter than Oliver Heaviside, or Dr. Oleg Dijafminko, or Nikola Tesla, then you've got a lot of hubris in you. 
I can assure you of one thing. I understand, I know this is going to sound really puffed up, but I don't care. The first person on earth to understand what a magnet is, how it works, why it works, what is a magnet, which nobody's ever explained before, and what is magnetism, how it works, why it works, what it does, why it does. Everybody out there is a bean counter. I'm more interested in the bean. What is the bean? How is the bean? How did it come to exist? What is it? What's its purpose? How does it work? What it does? What it doesn't? We've eliminated gravity. There's only one field, and there are several field modalities and extrapolation. Electricity, magnetism, magnetism, loss of inertia, ether, rarefaction, you have phase shift differential due to gyromagnetic precession in the coherent system of the magnet, which is a spatial object, as I said before, that's polarized and coherent. Ultimately, there's absolutely no difference between a magnet and a large massive body or any massive body. No difference at all. Gravity does not exist. What's the difference between the Earth and a magnet of the same size? What is the difference? We have two objects here. Incoherent. Coherent. Both are polarized because they're both full of atoms of whatever variety. Sumerian, cobalt, neodymium, iron, boron, ferrite, I don't care what it is, a large massive body made up of dirt and iron and endless numbers of uh, elements. What is the difference? What is the difference? Well, how do you create a magnet? What is a magnet before it is turned into a magnet. It is no different than this incoherent lump of whatever. Incoherent. Coherent. What is a magnet? A magnet is a coherent and polarized object. We have magnetic diversion. You're able to measure this with a Gauss meter, by the way. You have magnetic divergence and reciprocation centrifugally to centripetally from either side. And here you have the point of counter space. How is that different than any other massive object where you have? Remember, there's no such thing as a center of mass. Mass means nothing. What does mass mean? Well, I have a mass. Well, so damn what? What the hell does a mass mean? There's no such thing as a center of mass, there's only a center of counter space. That is how you're actually able to eliminate or greatly erase gravitational acceleration. Remember, gravity doesn't exist. I was able to demonstrate it crudely using a gyroscope. You're able to demonstrate it in my device that I created. I've created three of these. It does work. And whether you believe me or not, I do not give a damn. I don't care. The principles are present within Tesla, Oliver Heaviside, and Dr. Ola D. Jefferminko. However, not, none of those three people truly understood what a magnet is or what magnetism was. I was able to extrapolate, work back using platonic retroduction, how I was able to build a device. If gravity doesn't exist, what is gravity inherently? It is moved towards counter space. Gravity is not an independent force or field. Space and time are neither forces nor fields. They can't act on anything. Change the co-gravitational attraction of uh, mass 1 to mass 2 is not only possible, it does exist. I've actually thought of three different ways to change this um, using some coils and uh, some other large magnets and uh, applying a uh, centrifugal force uh, to a flywheel with magnets present. However, that requires access to some machining equipment that I don't actually own, so whether that's down in the future, I don't know. So anyway, here you have polarization and coherency, the magnet. I mean, is there anything you don't understand about this? Am I making it simple? I'm trying to dumb it down. I mean, I actually want to get more into depth on this, but I keep having to dumb it down and make it simple, but and there's a lot of really crude and very simple concepts that I, I assume you take for granted. I'm making this for myself, I'll make it for some other people, a few people. People that actually care about this, but you know, you need to think. If you think there's something independent such as gravity, then you're an idiot. But we were all taught that growing up, so we take it for granted. Well, that's gravity, it's acceleration of one object towards another. 
you know, I don't really know if the gravity is a force or not. You know, as the teacher said, gravity is an acceleration, it's not a force. Well, it's certainly not a field. And contrary to the assholes like Einstein and all these quantum relativists talking about the warpage of space and time, which is an absolute absurdity, which Tesla said was an absurdity, if we eliminate the bullshit of Einstein and all his mental midget cohorts, these pseudo-intellectual pinheaded morons, then what we're left with is everything that I've told you so far, which cannot be denied by anybody on Earth. Nobody. Yeah, I know that sounds like a lot of chest puffing. Two principles. Inertia and acceleration, and force and motion. Motion and acceleration are merely connotative extrapolations of force, which is the loss of inertia, and inertia. This is the only field. This is the ether. That's inertia. This is an extrapolation. Field modalities is expressed in electricity and is divinely expressed necessitatively by magnetism. Gravity does not exist. There is only one field. Everything else is a field modality. What do we mean by field modality? A field modality in simplex terms is nothing other than a field in a compounded system with divergence, i.e. magnetism. Electricity, transverse electricity and magnetism with a z-axis radial dielectric. Electricity is not merely transverse electricity and magnetism. Such is impossible. I've uh, given you hints of Tesla talking about that. A couple of others have talked, hinted at that. I was the first person to uncover that. It explains away the photoelectric effect that the moron Einstein won the Nobel Peace Prize for. The photoelectric effect, while his observed phenomena were accurate, his understanding and comprehension of what was going on was wholly inaccurate. I'll we'll talk some more in some future videos about magnetic reciprocation. In the meantime, I created a little crude model here. Yes, this is extremely crude. Of magnetic reciprocation. Now, if you look at it and don't, if you imagine this is a magnet, say North Pole here or South Pole here, remember there's no such thing as polarity in a magnet. If you look at it end on, you'll see a circle, or what should be a perfect circle. If it's not a perfect circle, that's fine. We have magnetic divergence along the centrifugal edge here. Reciprocation and assimilation, convergence along the inverse centripetal. Divergence along this polarity, along the centrifugal edge. This is measurable by a Gauss meter, by the way. Divergence, convergence along the centripetal. However, end on, you'll see a perfect circle. However, if you actually take the whole, and you talk about the center of any magnet, which there is no center of any magnet, we're talking about counter space versus space. Everything works like simplex fluid dynamics in a magnet. But, if you take the max throw of magnetic divergence, which is right about here, before it starts reassimilating, reintegrating along the other side, let's see if I have enough time left here on this video, if you look at it end on, say I'm looking at one pole here and looking at magnetic divergence, actually be like this. It's hard to draw a, a logarithmic golden ratio spiral, but what I'm actually left with is a point of magnetic max throw divergence before reassimilation occurs is the golden ratio. And uh, convergence is another golden ratio. We have here, I need to draw this a little better, but it's drawing a golden ratio spiral is certainly not the easiest thing to do. I'll draw the spiral first. There we go. And I'll draw the magnet along where the centrifugal edge of the magnet will be at. There we go, that's accurate. Here we have a golden ratio spiral. This is max divergence here. This is phi. And if we draw the inverse of the same point of magnetic divergence, remember simplex fluid dynamics, we'll have the inverse. This is why there is a phase shift rarefaction on the North Pole and compression on the South Pole. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but not really. 
Here we have two logarithmic spirals. Spirals. This is centrifugal and this is centripetal. Centripetal. This is centrifugal. Divergence, convergence. It's looking end on on one face of the magnet. And this is why when you look underneath the ferro cell, you're only able to see so so far on the depth of field on a ferro cell, but considering that it's only a couple microns thin, that's the way it should be. You'll actually see this, and at the same time you'll see this. You see that? One centrifugal, one centripetal. You look on the ferro cell, that's what you see. You see divergent clockwise and convergent counterclockwise. But as I showed you before in numerous other videos, and people keep having me to explain, this end, it looks like we're looking at clockwise, and this end looks like we're looking at counterclockwise. However, they're both the same. If you actually extrapolate the divergence, see here we have uh, counterclockwise, over here we have uh, also counterclockwise. The, the force vectors are actually moving in the same direction, but the mind screw that our human brains can understand is polarization by definition. You have clockwise here, and apparent clockwise here, counterclockwise here. Ultimately, they're both moving the same direction. Reciprocation is necessitated under lowest pressure mediation for assimilation of the force vectors. Remember, we've negated polarity. There's no such thing as a North Pole and a South Pole and a magnet. All there is is the inverse of counter space. The inverse of counter space is necessitatively polarization. Point, line, circle, sphere. Extrapolation, simplex platonics. We've negated gravity. Gravity does not exist. It is a move towards counter space. The same way a magnet is a move towards counter space, except a magnet is not merely polarized, a lump of polarized atoms, but is also polarized and coherent. That, all, that is all a magnet is by definition, as differentiated from magnetism. So, I actually didn't explain that as well as I wanted to, especially regarding uh, geomagnetic precession and uh, applied forces, uh, specifically as uh, in reference to the gyroscope. But I hope you got the gist of it. If you're smart, you got it instantly. If, you're, if you weren't smart, then I'm or a little less than some more, I'll probably have to explain it again a little bit better. That's why I need to stop making these videos at 4 o'clock in the morning, but it was a nice jab at it. It'll work better on trying to simplify it for you or somebody else, but uh, you just need to understand, you need to think that there's absolutely no such thing as gravity. There's only a move towards counter space. Either it's expressed in extrapolation from force and motion, just like throwing an apple up in the air and ultimately it will stop at some point. It'll reassimilate back the erasure of space that created space, the erasure of that uh, force in motion. More videos to come. If this video is less than subpar, then I certainly am to blame. I've tried to simplify it as much as possible, but I will try to simplify it more. Luxy video.